and I actually have storage on my phone. I'm like, it is a, to me, it's like a miracle. It's Christmas miracle, even though it's June. <laughs> Hi, it's Sonia here with Pretty Stitch. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, I'm so happy to have you here. So usually I post videos about knitting or crocheting and I sometimes do yarn hauls. I have pattern tutorials. I have stitch tutorials. I do Tunisian crochet. And today I'm doing what I like to call is a crochet chat where I sit in front of my door here and I crochet and I just talk about what's going on, new projects, um, just random stuff. And in case you're wondering why I sit in front of my door, I did share about it in a previous video, but if you're new here, you're probably like, why is she sitting in front of her door? <laughs> and it's because um, this is my new filming space and it's also a guest room and it's a tiny room. And I was sitting at, in front of my desk, but you couldn't really see me crochet and there really isn't any other wall space in this room except the door here. So I am sitting on my lovely stadium seat that I use when my one child is doing track and field, but that is over and so I'm sitting in front of my door instead of the hard floor and um, I'm going to crochet. And it might look a little different to video, I got a new phone and I actually have storage on my phone. I'm like, it is a, to me, it's like a miracle. It's Christmas miracle, even though it's June. <laughs> uh, I have been struggling with my phone for a while. So I'm gonna to try to film this on my phone. We're gonna see how it goes instead of my camera um, to see if it's a little easier. I think for my other videos, I still use my camera. I'm not sure. I have an editing program on the phone, but I've only used it for shorts. Uh, you know, our small videos, um, not really longer ones. So we'll see how that goes and uploading it and lighting and all that. I mean, I've been struggling with lighting. I think I need to get a new ring light, but I've been kind of um, not wanting to spend the money because I've had so many other extra expenses that have come up recently. So I'm just sort of like, yeah, well, I'll just use the ring light I have. I mean, it's it's fine, it's not as, I think I need a bigger one, maybe, I don't know. But we're just gonna make do with what we have. But I thought um, before I get started on my crocheting, I will share uh, just a project that I finished that I was featuring in my, I, th I think I featured it in my other crochet chat video, I'm not 100% sure, but it is, so here it is, it's a Tunisian crochet bucket hat. And as you can see, it, it's pretty wild looking with lots of colors here. Uh, it uses short rows. I love the crown. So the crown is like the crowning achievement. <laughs> I love the crown is, is my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the hat. I mean, I think it's pretty cute. I'm going to be wearing it at the beach. Um, and I'm gonna be with some nieces and nephews that are little. So as someone said to me that I showed this hat to, they're like, well, they'll be able to find you easily. I'm like, yeah. Sometimes I'm babysitting, so, and I always wear a hat at the beach because I don't like to get burned on my head because it's, it hurts. <laughs> and then it peels and it's gross. So I always wear a hat at the beach and I thought, you know, I'll make some beach hats and might as well make it a fun one. So here is one of those hats. And yeah, the kids will be like, there she is. There's Aunt Sonia with her crazy hat. Um, but. There is a tutorial up on this project. If you're interested in checking that out, I will place um, a link in the description box for that. And um, yeah, so today I am continuing to crochet this project. It's one of those that I set down and I pick up and it's my sweater prototype. So we actually have the front. So here is the front and it's a V-neck because I love V-necks and I got the back done so as you can see this is pretty crazy looking so if you've not seen one of these crochet chats this is a prototype so a lot of times when i am working on a pattern and i don't want to just break out the yarn that you know the really nice yarn so this is just scraps of yarn and it's basically the weight of yarn i want to use and i am just trying to see if this pattern is going to be a go or not before i um, get the nice yarn out. So I've been 
working on this prototype. So finally got the front and back done. I did sew the shoulder seams. I only partially sewed <laughs> this one here because I ran out. I had left a tail for, for uh, sewing and it wasn't long enough. And I'm like, eh, you know, because I'm what I'm going to do after I'm done with this project is I'm going to take this part and reuse the yarn for something else. So I call it my recycling. But now we are working on sleeves. So I was debating on whether I wanted to do just crochet the sleeves right on here. But because of the stitch that I'm using, I'm going to be making I'm going to be making set in sleeves. So that means you work the sleeves separately and then you sew them on. And so that's what I am attempting to do now. So I just got started. So here is the chain for the sleeve. So I need to get going on working on this. So I'm going to be making the sleeve starting at my shoulder here and then working my way down my arm. And I want to make a long sleeve. So with this pattern, I'm thinking if it does become a reality that I'm going to try to make it so um, more like a recipe so that you can make a sweater to fit your size and basically use any yarn that you want to use, any hook, like I'm using an H hook, five millimeter hook. This yarn, most of it is DK weight yarn or number three yarn, but if you really don't enjoy working with DK weight yarn, then, you know, if it's a recipe, then you can just, you know, use the instructions and use whatever yarn you like and hook size that you like. So that's kind of the goal with this. If I, if it does become a successful prototype, which I'm hoping it does. I had said before I was inspired by something, a picture I saw of on AI, an AI picture, I guess, a crochet picture. And I don't really like a lot of crochet AI, it's really becoming a problem where people think they're actual projects and, or they want something like that and they want somebody to make it. And it's just not, you know, it's not realistic, uh, you know, but this one I've seen, I was like, you know, I could probably come up with my version of this AI picture I just I thought the design was cute like the elements of it like I'm not trying to like copy it verbatim but just kind of put my own spin on it um, and I do that a lot I love to look through like sweaters or just wallpaper prints I love I have gotten inspiration from I love the art deco period uh, like the geometric shapes and I don't know the style. I just, I just love that um, time period for design. So I've actually made some projects that um, I was inspired by Art Deco wallpaper of all things. Uh, I've made two knitted hats uh, using an Art Deco print that um, I saw the print and then I made. Actually, no, I've made. I made at least three items using an Art Deco. I have three patterns out. So I have a headband pattern that uses the Art Deco wallpaper uh, inspiration. And then I have two knitted hats that also use the Art, De the Art Deco wallpaper inspiration. And uh, I can put those links in the description box if you wanna check them out, if you're interested in seeing like how on earth she can make a hat or <laughs> a headband or it's actually an ear warmer using an art, using wallpaper. But yeah, I do, I do, um, you know, get inspiration from things like that or even trends or whatever. Um, or sometimes I just, I don't know, something will just pop in my head and I'm just like, hmm, I want to, I want to make something like this hat here. I wanted to, I, I, learned how about Tunisian short rows and this hat uses that technique and I made two projects using that and I also have a tutorial that goes over the basics of short rows and I thought you know I think it'd be really fun to make a hat 
using that technique. And uh, then I was like, I think it would be really fun to use a lot of colors <laughs> with that. And also I've been trying to use up my cotton stash for the longest time. I uh, have a lot of yarn and last year I did a series called Bust My Stash and I did one in 2020 as well, just trying to see how much yarn I could use up in a year, how many projects I could make, how many patterns I could do. And uh, so yeah, I did that last year and I've been really trying to get through my cotton stash. I'm actually to the point where if I wanna make a project with cotton yarn, like let's say I wanted to make a hat using just one color, I don't think I have enough to do that. I now have like scraps of cotton yarn, so now I have to figure out, you know, what can I do with these scraps of yarn? Um, and cotton yarn is, you know, a lot of times it's used for kitchen items. So if you have little like bits of cotton yarn, you, you know, they make great scrubbies. I love um, using cotton yarn for kitcheny type items like scrubbies or hot pads. Uh, someone uh, suggested a Swiffer cover, and I don't use my Swiffer a lot, but I do use it sometimes. So I thought, you know, I should try to make a Swiffer cover, and maybe even one that's, you know, all different colors, because that's kind of what I have right now. Uh, that that could be nice. I don't have any uh, store-bought Swiffer covers anymore. Like I used to, you know, buy the refill packs, but. You know, it gets expensive and I thought, you know, I'm not gonna do that. So what I usually do is I just stick like washcloths at the end of my Swiffer because it has like these push thing. I have a really old one, so I don't know what the newer ones are like. And it's not like the um, ones that you push buttons and things shoot out of it. It's not anything fancy like that. It's just basically a little dry mop type thing. Um, so I, in mine you, has these little things that you um, can push something in to kind of hold it. It's got like little teeth or whatever. So I just stick a washcloth on the end and just stick it in there and just use it like that. But sometimes that comes off. Sometimes I have to like, you know, reset the washcloth basically. And you know, it would be nice to have an actual like cover on there and then when I'm done just take it off and throw it in the wash so I'm thinking I will actually make an actual Swiffer cover and then um, I'll have that for my Swiffer. Maybe I'll want to use my Swiffer more. <laughs> I don't have a lot of hardwood floors in my house uh, or, or hard surface type floors. I have a lot of mostly carpet so obviously can't use my Swiffer on carpet because, you know, that would be weird and it wouldn't work very well. Um, but, you know, I do have, like my kitchen is not carpeted, thank goodness. I was friends with somebody where they had carpet in their kitchen and I remember being a little girl thinking that was like really cool for some reason. But now as, as an adult, I'm like, what a nightmare. <laughs> what a nightmare having, you know, actually I knew two people with carpet in their kitchen and one the carpet was like a really low pile so it wasn't I mean it wasn't great like as a kid I thought it was cool but as an adult I'm like yeah no thank you and then my other friend I knew um she I think she had this weird pink carpet in her kitchen of all things and it was not a really low pile Carpet. Like it wasn't a shag carpet, but you know, it was like a carpet you would put in your bedroom or something, like a little girl's room. It was really weird. Um, so that, that um, she was, you know, she didn't love that. I guess the place they had gotten was like a fixer upper. And so they were kind of just doing room by rooms and kitchens can be so expensive. So, you know, um, she had to put up with that pink carpet for a bit in the kitchen, but yeah, that was, that was very odd, a very odd design choice. Um, but you know, I think it was probably put in either in the 70s or the 80s, you know, that was a wild time for design, you know. And I grew up in the 80s and you know, the clothing with all the wild 
designs and colors and the shoulder pads and all that stuff, the hair, the big hair, you know, and that's just, you know, what, how we looked, you know? And it's funny because some of that is coming back in style and it cracks me up. I don't think the big hair, I think sometimes I used to be a hairdresser, so uh, I don't really keep up with that world too much anymore, but once in a while, I'll just kind of see what's going on. And I feel like there's, there's always somebody that's trying to like push that big hair thing again. And I just, I don't think people are going for it, to be honest. I mean, it's, it was a lot of upkeep back in the day. I mean, I, as you can see, I have really straight hair. My hair is like super straight. I actually, this, I curled, I curled this like, you know, is that a curl? No, it's a bend and it's like a, barely a bend. So for me to get like the big hair was like, almost impossible. I mean, I gave it my best shot <laughs> in high school, but uh, you know, it, it, it didn't look cute. It really didn't. And I, I think by senior year, I abandoned the big hair dreams. It just, I had gotten this perm and my hair literally was split from the bottom all the way to the top. Like it was, it was bad. It was just not good. So I, was in beauty school at the time. I went to the tech school when I was in high school, so which was actually really great. Um, and we used to go to hair shows uh, as part of like our education, which were they were really fun actually. And those hair shows, it's basically like a big convention, like any type of convention. There's lots of tables and booths, you know, people trying to sell you stuff, whatever. And a lot of times, you know, there was free samples, so I used to just get as many free samples of conditioner as I could for my hair. And then I would do these treatments at home and my hair, I remember we just suck it up so much conditioner. And now I hardly use any, like if I use the amount of conditioner that I used back in the late eighties, early nineties, I would be, my hair would be so greasy and disgusting. And I, I gave up my perm dreams a long time ago. I always had these visions of this beautiful curly hair. I love curly hair and I have some family members that have the most beautiful curly hair. I, I don't have that and I've always wanted that but I've come to the conclusion that that is not my reality. It's never going to be my reality and I just kind of need to you know accept what I have. I used to, when I was a little girl, I used to pray for curly hair. I asked God to give me curly hair. And then I heard some people, um, when they had children, sometimes their hair changes. Like I worked with a girl that that happened. And I was like, Oh, maybe when I have a baby, my hair will be curly. And no, it never happened. Never happened. But you know, that's okay. At least I have hair. I'm thankful for that. You know, I'm grateful. You know, some people struggle with their hair and so you know it's straight as a pin but you know i have it so you know i'm thankful for that and um i mean i can curl it if i want to it just it's a matter of staying in like when my daughter got married um i did curl my hair with a small iron and she was like mom that looks terrible i said this hair has to last all day like the style that i wanted and I knew if I curled it fairly tightly, then it would just fall out. Like you can literally, I should do like a time elapse of me curling my hair and then it just falls out. It's kind of amazing, especially if it's a humid day, like it's not happening at all. I know people with curly hair have the opposite problem if it's humid and their hair just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and now mine gets flatter and flatter and flatter. <laughs> so, um, you know, we all, we all have our issues with our hair. Um, but yeah, by the time her, she got married in the afternoon. So by the time, uh, the afternoon rolled around, my hair had chilled out and it was fine and just like more looser waves at that point, because my hair just doesn't want to hold a curl unless it's that magical day where it's, uh, no humidity. Maybe if I lived in California, you know, where there's very low humidity, my hair would hold a curl, but you know, here on the east coast of PA, you know, Pennsylvania weather, like Pennsylvania weather, as I've said before, can be pretty, pretty wild. Um, this week included because like today, 
Uh, this morning I was wearing a sweater, and we're in June, and it's only in the very low 70s. But and this is early in the week, so by the end of the week, by the weekend, it's going to be in 90s. So we're going from low 70s to mid 90s, all within the same week. And you know that's just how Pennsylvania weather is. So it can be a little bit rough on whatever type of hair you might have. <laughs> So now I need to join another color because I, like I said, I've been using this scrap um, yarn that I have. And it's nice to have bits and pieces of yarn sometimes because if you, especially if you are a designer, a crochet designer, a knit designer, um, because sometimes your ideas don't always pan out. They just don't. And, you know, you really don't want to, I don't want to say it's a waste, but you know, bust out the really nice yarn and then it's a failed project. And so it's nice to have, you know, the yarn that you don't love as much or it's just a ho-hum, like this yarn, I don't even know what this is. This is some old, I think they used to call it like baby yarn or something. It's that, you know, finer yarn. It's more like a lighter DK weight yarn and it's got like that sparkle twist thing on it. I guess they always thought babies needed to be like sparkly back in the day. I don't know, but it's not my favorite yarn. Um, now it does make really nice doll clothing. So I do have quite a few 18 inch doll projects. And so instead of making baby projects with this yarn, I have been using it to make uh, doll clothing because it does make really nice doll clothes. But yeah, I guess they feel like babies need to be like sparkling or I don't know shiny I don't know um, but yeah it is nice um, just to have that yarn that you know if it's a fail you need to take it apart you need to cut it here and there um, you know that's okay that's you know not a really huge deal instead of you know if you use like this beautiful cashmere yarn and then you're like no or the type of yarn that doesn't unravel easily that you know, certain, this is just acrylic. So if I need to take it apart, it's like not a problem. But sometimes certain yarn, like wool yarn, it sticks. And during trying to frog it, as we say, or unravel it is just a nightmare. Uh, so yeah, I try to use yarn that can easily be frogged and is not, you know, super expensive. Uh, yarn. So that's just a little tip if you know you did want to dip your toe into the design world, you know, just use some scrap yarn. If you don't have any, um, I recommend going to a thrift store and picking out, and they often have like grab bags of just random bits of usually acrylic yarn, usually probably a Red Heart Super Saver or some this baby yarn <laughs> in there. And uh, that's great yarn to practice on and, or figure out a design on. And then once you feel, feel like, you know, this is a go, it is definitely working out for me, then, you know, use a really nice yarn. <laughs> so yeah, I do have like yarn that's earmarked for the nice project. Like I just made a shawl not that long ago and uh, using this really pretty Knit Picks yarn with absolutely beautiful colorway. And that was one, when I was working on the shawl pattern, I did do a prototype first. Uh, and then I was like, okay. And, and it, there was a couple false starts with that where it just, you know, I, it, you know it just wasn't working at first. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to kind of iron out all the bugs and, you know, get all the bugs out of it. So once I did, I'm like, all right, this is a, this is a go, this is it's go time. and. Then I was able to use the really beautiful yarn and I you know, was really happy with how that project turned out. Uh, but yeah, sometimes though the projects aren't always a go. Sometimes it's, it's big fat fail and that's just part of you know, the design process. So don't, don't get discouraged if you do have an idea and it's just not panning out right away. You know, it might be one that you kind of just need to sit on for a little bit and kind of like, what is the word, ruminate on it, mull it over in your head and, you know, and then 
a lot of, you know, not a lot of times, but then sometimes, you know, it'll just come to you and you'll be like, this is what I need to do, or this is what I need to use, or this is the stitch count it should be. And then it all works out. Now, of course, there are other times where, you know, you have a project that you're trying to figure out and you set it aside and it's just still a fail. And, and that's okay too. Sometimes you just need to cry uncle and be like, you know, it's not, it's never going to work, you know? So, um, so I would say that probably happens to me, you know, maybe 20% of the time, 30, I don't know. Most of the projects that I try to do at this point, you know, they do work out or sometimes they'll, they'll morph into something else. Like I'll have an idea, like I'll never forget the time I was trying to make a pair of pants for a doll. It was um, doll clothing and somehow it morphed into a dress. You know, these pants turned, it went from pants to a dress and the dress actually turned out really, really cute. Like. I absolutely love that project, but it was just kind of funny how I was, my original intention was making pants <laughs> and then turned into a dress. So sometimes that happens too, where you, you're starting it and you're just like, oh, it does. I, I think maybe it was like, it doesn't want to be this. It did not want to be pants. It wanted to be a dress. So <laughs> that's, that's exactly what happened with that. So that was kind of a one of those funny things. And then there's other times where you have an idea and from start to finish, it just works out beautifully. Like, um, so for instance, I have this hat right here. It's a granny stitch hat. And I had this idea in my head, like how I wanted the crown, how I wanted this part and how I wanted the hat band or part of, or not really, this is more of the band here, but how I wanted this part of the hat to go. And it just all like, practically made itself. It designed itself. That was just one of those like magical projects that just, you know, I had a, just, a, just a tiny little bit of issue with figuring out stitch count with the crown because the crown is once you, um, you know, you need to, I wanted this to be solid because I do plan on wearing this hat at the beach. And when the sun's hitting the top of my head, I don't want my head to get burned. Um, and then, you know, I was going to create this, the granny stitch everywhere else. So I just had to, the worst part was just getting the stitch count correctly. So I could do the granny stitch part, but even that was not really any trouble at all to do that. So it was just one of those projects where this one here, I have another one, this checkerboard hat, like that was a lot of false starts with this guy, just getting the stitch count right, getting um, how big I wanted the checks. Cause I started out, I was gonna have them larger and then I started it and I was like, that looks stupid. I do not like that. And then I had them smaller again, did not like that. So it was just like, how big do I want these to be? How am I going to make this grow? How do I want to have like the top of the hat here? Like what was gonna be, um, Cause like the original idea was to have really big blocks and, but then there was like only like four and I just thought it looked dumb. And so yeah, that one did not uh, come together as easily as the granny stitch hat. But once I figured it out, that was one I had to set aside for a little while and kind of just think it through and figure out some math. Cause there is math involved with crochet, especially something like that. And then all of a sudden it came together. And even when I started working on it, I remember getting like probably more than halfway. And then I was like, do I even like this? Is this, does this even look cute? I don't know. Um, but I thought, you know, I'm this far in, we're just, we're just going for it. We're just going to keep, keep on keeping on with this hat. And then it was done and I was like, oh, okay, that turned out really cute. And then I've had a lot of people that like the hat, which is nice. I mean, I don't just make things for validation. Yes, of course, it's always nice if somebody likes what you do, but um, you know, just that personal satisfaction that I was able to figure out all the math and, you know, turn it into a hat and, and into a hat that I liked. And, you know, like the vision that I had kind of in my head 
I was able to translate into yarn. That's always, uh, I just love that when that happens, when there is an idea and then it becomes a reality. Like that's always just so fun for me with this whole design process. So I'm hoping that happens with this sweater that I am trying to uh, design. I, I haven't done a lot of wearable projects because sizing is just really difficult and it's all over the place, especially for women, because we are all shapes and sizes, you know, and not just, you know, we're not just talking about height, you know, breast size can, you know, be a thing, um, you know, whether your shoulders are more narrow or, you know, broader, like there's so much, or, or even your arms, like I have very long arms, but I'm kind of, I'm short. You know but my arms are ridiculously long so that was that's always been like a challenge for me just to find clothes to fit me right because i might need a certain size like for short sleeves it's fine but then for long sleeves like it'll fit this part of my body but then the short the sleeves are too short and they're not supposed to be three-quarter length sleeves so like you know it's really hard to kind of come up with just you know, five or six sizes and be like, yeah, this is gonna fit, you know, everybody. Like, that's just, it's just not realistic. So I prefer if I make a wearable to kind of design it that you can design it to fit your size. Um, so that when your project is done, you're happy with your item and you're going to want to wear it. Cause there's nothing worse than, you know, you make something and then it just, looks weird or doesn't fit right and then you don't want to wear it and you know the whole goal of making it is so that you want to wear it so I, I've been trying to design more that way as far as wearable so like this sweater will be more geared that way I know some people don't like that they would prefer you know you need to chain x amount of stitches and you need to make this many rows and but you know a recipe you can do it like if you have some pretty good uh, skills as far as your um, you know your crocheting or your knitting and you come across the pattern like that don't be afraid you know you you can do it if you can if your stitches are nice and you have a good grasp on you know knitting or crocheting try it I, I think you know you might surprise yourself that it might not be as hard as you think it is but uh yeah so that's kind of how things how i my thought process with designing and all of that i think i am going to end this video because i have to do some editing and i am going to watch a movie tonight uh, my church is doing a movie night which is really really nice i, I actually had forgotten about it, but it's a movie I like. We're going to see the movie Up, the Disney movie where the about the older gentleman with the balloons on the house and it has like the, the kid and I just remember the part where the dog, where they go squirrel with the dog. <laughs> and, uh, um, so it's, it's a sweet movie. It's actually the widows group of our church is kind of sponsoring the event. So I think that's really nice. And the movie's extremely appropriate. For that um, especially because I am a widow but I am not a part of the group as far as like sometimes I attend some events but I you know I'm not like on the committee or anything like that and uh, so I think this is really nice usually when we have widow events it's just for widows only which I think it's nice to kind of include you know everybody because when you are a widow and I can speak from experience, it can be very isolating. Like, as I was sharing with a friend of mine, like it's been three years since my husband died and I'm doing fine. Like, you know, I can't complain. Yeah, it's it's not easy, it's not fun. There's been a lot of challenges, but you know, I'm okay. Like, I'm still here. I'm still, you know, keeping on, keeping on, as I say, but Sometimes when people find out you're a widow, like, they just treat you weird. Like, I don't know, like, I, I've said to people in the past, like, I feel like someone finds out that my husband died and then it's like, 
you know, like I'm this weird alien creature and I'm, and I'm still myself, I'm still a person, I'm just, you know, I, I just had a terrible thing happen to me, you know, where my husband died on, on younger, you know, and there's been women that, you know, I'm 51, but there's been women where it's happened to them, you know, in their 20s, so that's gotta be even more hard, you know, and it's never easy even if you're, let's say, you know, I just remember thinking like Queen Elizabeth, her husband died before her and they had been married, what, 70 years? But it was still hard, even though it was kind of expected because he was almost a hundred years old, but even still, you know, it's not an easy thing, but I think at that age, you know, it's expected where at my age, you know, my husband was in his early fifties, it was not expected. And so then people were like, oh, you know, and they just act all strange, but yeah. So sorry to mean to get into that, but yeah, that's what I'm doing tonight. So I need to, to head off or get ready for that. But I hope you enjoyed this crochet chat. And if you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.